bragging. They broke federal law. Trump just ordered their arrest. It's finally happening folks. The lawlessness our nation has been facing is finally coming to an abrupt end thanks to President Donald Trump and his administration. Homeland Security Secretary Kirst Jim Nielsen confirmed today that her department has officially asked federal prosecutors to do their job and look into the filling of criminal charges against sanctuary cities and states that refuse to cooperate with federal deportation efforts and federal laws. This confirmation comes just days after the loony far-left state of California enacted a new sanctuary law which went into effect on January 1 of this year. The law severely restricts cooperation between state and federal governments, but of course, it doesn't limit the help the federal government is forced to provide to California when their disastrous extreme far-left ideals fail and they come calling. So as our failure of an Attorney General Jeff Sessions hides in the back room, Nielsen calls these anarchist states and cities to task. This unprecedented move follows the Justice Department issuing a stern final warning to various sanctuary cities around the country. These include Cook County, Illinois, Chicago, Illinois, New Orleans, Louisiana, New York, New York, and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania which are on the Justice Department's hit list for failing to enforce federal immigration laws. Via Fox New what are sanctuary cities and why are they so controversial in the illegal immigration debate? As the new year kicked off, California officially became a sanctuary state, a designation that means the nation's most populous state will limit just how much local law enforcement officials will cooperate with federal immigration authorities. The law was signed by Governor Jerry Brown in October but didn't go into effect until January 1. It, in part, bars police from asking people about their immigration status or participating in some federal immigration enforcement activities. These are uncertain times for undocumented Californians and their families, and this bill strikes a balance that will protect public safety, while bringing a measure of comfort to those families who are now living in fear every day, Brown said when he signed the bill into law. President Trump has promised to crack down on so-called sanctuary cities and signed an executive order nearly one year ago that moved to strip federal grant money from cities that harbor undocumented immigrations. A federal judge permanently blocked in December as he said the Trump administration lacks the authority to impose new conditions on spending that have already been approved by Congress. He said Trump's executive order violated the Fifth and Tenth Amendments. What are sanctuary cities? While the exact specifications can vary, sanctuary city policies overall limit just how much local law enforcement officials comply with federal immigration authorities. San Francisco, for example, passed an ordinance in 1989 that prohibits city employees, funds or resources from assisting Immigration and Customs Enforcement ICE, in enforcing federal immigration law unless it's required by state or federal law. It also passed an ordinance that limits when law enforcement officials can give ICE notice that an immigrant has been released from a local jail and prohibits law enforcement officials from cooperating with detainer requests from ICE. Berkeley, near San Francisco, is reportedly the original sanctuary city. It passed a resolution in 1971 that protected sailors who wanted to resist the Vietnam War. It's difficult to nail down a concrete number of just how many cities are considered to be a sanctuary for immigrants, some cities have an ordinance or policy in place, others do not. Aside from cities, five states, California, Oregon, Connecticut, Rhode Island and Vermont, have enacted laws that limit how much police can contribute assistance to federal immigration agents, according to the New York Times. The Immigrant Legal Resource Center, ILRC argues that counties, not just cities, should establish sanctuary policies for undocumented immigrants. How are they viewed? The debate about sanctuary cities intensified in July 2015 when Katie Steinel, 32, was killed as she strolled along the San Francisco waterfront with her father. Steinel was fatally shot by a man with a criminal record who had slipped into the U.S. multiple times illegally. A California jury acquitted the man accused of shooting Steinel of the more serious charges, including murder, involuntary manslaughter and assault with a deadly weapon.
Jose Inés García Zard was only convicted of being a felon in possession of a firearm. While he is expected to be deported, the Justice Department is considering bringing federal charges against him. Attorney General Jeff Sessions addressed a room full of federal prosecutors and law enforcement officials last year and criticized cities, like Philadelphia, that are giving sanctuary to criminals. He asked them to reconsider the harm they are doing to their residents. ILRC argues that local law enforcement jurisdictions do not have a legal obligation to assist with civil immigration enforcement, which is the responsibility of the federal government. A local decision to offer resources to federal immigration enforcement authorities is completely voluntary, the legal organization said in a 2016 report. ILRC called Trump's threat to restrict federal funding of sanctuary cities purely retaliatory in motivation. Many mayors of these cities have also bucked the threat and continued to affirm protection for immigrants. We are not going to sacrifice a half million people who live amongst us, who are part of our communities, whose family members and loved ones happen to be people in many cases who are either permanent residents or citizens, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, a Democrat, said last year. This is what we as Americans have been waiting for decades. The lawlessness and the fact that our own government, the very government we pay for dearly with our blood, sweat, and tears are finally being brought to the realization that they work for we the people, not for every reject that decides they will have a better life here in the states and takes it upon themselves to come into our nation to take advantage of our kindness and generosity, which borders on insanity. Let's hope California officials decide to fight this and end up in federal prison. Now that would be a great day for all American citizens. Please share if you want to see these lawless politicians behind bars, bars.